Greetings and one, welcome to one and all for this new series of studies on the Gospel according to St. John. Let us pray before we begin. Almighty Father, merciful God, we at this I come before the throne of grace, depending not on our own wisdom but depending upon your grace as we yearn to learn more and more from your word as we try to study the gospel according to St. John. Help us to do it faithfully, diligently. Help us to be faithful in interpreting your scripture, Father. Submit myself and the people who listen to this and to thy mighty care. May you speak to each and every one of us through your Holy Spirit, Father. May we be able to learn. May we be able to grow in you. In Christ's most matchless name we pray this. Amen. There is an aphorism that I'd like to quote to all of you at the very beginning, at the very first session itself. I have seen various iterations of this saying, but the version I most often recite goes like this, that we do not see the things as they are, but we see things as we are. Every time we uh, encounter many people, any group of people who who are some of them are very well known to the scriptures who study the bible and there are there is another group who are not much known to the scriptures so if, even the people who are listening to this series of lectures will have this differences so my all my attempt first of all is to reach to each and every one of you those who know the scriptures well and those who are yet growing in the scriptures. So I'd like to begin with this admission. I have a set of lenses that you cannot see but without which I cannot see. These are the lenses of my background and my experiences, my gender and my upbringing, my ethnicity and my education. These lenses shape, color, inform and even taint my view of the world and my very best attempts at objectivity. This is also true for each one of you. I begin this series uh, this way because I want every one of you to strive for objectivity while also realizing that uh, they will, the objectivity will never be fully achieved. I want you all to learn to embrace their, your own experiences, your own backgrounds and viewpoints while striving both to question and to transcend them. This, pro this particular study is admittedly a product of my own personal lenses. It is therefore imperfect and to a certain degree both culturally conditioned and socially located, despite my very best attempts to see beyond my own limitations. I confess that I see the Gospel of John not as it is but as I am. Thus, this this particular study is not intended to be a final word on the subject, but rather uh, a student, a Bible student's take on how to read and understand the gospel. Still, I hope that uh, what we are going to study over here will prove useful to those who are interested in studying the gospel of John, be it may it be in a classroom or a Bible study group or even on, on, on their own personal level. Above all, I want to help others become better, more perceptive readers of the Gospel of John with an ability to trace the rhetoric of the narrative from beginning to the end. With that goal in mind and with a view to prepare the readers of what this particular study attempts to do, the rest of this uh, session will, will, will try to understand and outline the starting points that will guide our particular reading of the Gospel of John. So what are the starting points? The Gospel of John firstly originally was written for a specific audience at the end of the first century. The Gospel of John was originally written for a specific audience at the end of the first century. It is common for modern people to approach literature both ancient and modern without ever asking to whom was this original written. It is also quite common for people who identify with the Christian tradition to read the New Testament as if Christian believers of any century were the intended audience. 
there are oversights that beg uh, for corrections. One essential starting point when approaching the Gospel of John is the awareness that modern readers are not the originally intended audience. Rather, the audience for whom the Gospel was written was likely a community of Jesus' followers living at the end of the first century with a very different language, worldview, thought world and geographical location than most modern readers. And certainly, most readers of this book, while reflecting on our own experiences with a text, is an essential part of the reading process. It is also important for us to ask about those for whom the writing was originally intended. This will allow us to understand the message of the fourth gospel in new and potentially enlightening ways. Secondly, the gospel of John was originally written in Greek language. It was written in Greek language. The trade language of the Roman world during the first century was Hellenistic Greek, which is also known as Koine Greek, which is called as a common Greek language. This is the language in which the entire New Testament was written. While most of the standard English translations convey the message of John's Gospel adequately, there is a little doubt that knowledge of Greek language can serve to inform and enhance the modern reader's experience with the text. Anyone who has studied another language knows there is no such thing as one-to-one -one correspondence between one thought world and another. Sometimes it can be very difficult to take an idea as it is expressed in the idiom of one language and faithfully render that idea into another language. A well-known Italian proverb says, Traditor tradition, translator traitor, which is roughly translated that every translator is a traitor. Translators inevitably makes interpretative decisions that influence how a given text is read and understood. Throughout this entire study, we will not only make references to the Greek text of the New Testament, but also other ancient documents in their original languages, so as to avoid undermining the reader's confidence in, the, in his or her preferred English translation. I reference the Greek only when I think it is absolutely necessary to understand the point under discussion. Thirdly, the Gospel of John is an anonymous writing. The moniker according to John was apparently applied to this Gospel very early, perhaps as early as the second century. But there is no explicit information about the author within the writing itself. Though all the four Gospels were originally anonymous, each came to be associated with a specific author over time. The traditional view is that the author was John, the son of Zebedee, one of Jesus' twelve disciples. The view also identifies the anonymous, uh, uh, the beloved disciple as we see in 1323, 1926, 22, 21, 7 and 20 with the author. Even though it has achieved an almost authoritative status among many modern Christians, this view has been roundly rejected by most contemporary scholars. Not only do we not know who wrote the Gospel, but it is also very likely that the Gospel was edited multiple times before the final versions began to circulate. Throughout this whole study, we will use terms such as John, John's Gospel and the Gospel of John in all accord with an established scholarly convention. However, try to understand this, that looking at this Gospel with a critical lens is very much important. We may also question the authorship of this particular Gospel. Fourthly, the Gospel of John is an autonomous narrative that must be read on its own terms. Many different presentations of Jesus exist in contemporary culture and this was also true during the first century. We need only to look at the four Gospels of the New Testament to confirm this. It is common for many to read the four Gospels in the light of one another, to read in the light of the rest of the New Testament or even to read in the light of certain theological systems or confession. The Gospel of John is a story of Jesus that can stand on its own without the assistance of other Gospels like Matthew, Mark, Luke 
or various interpreters of Jesus' life and vocations like Paul, James, Augustine, Equinus, Luther, etc. Only after we understand John's unique message about Jesus can we introduce other interpretative voices from the first century or later. This particular study will look at the unique story of Jesus as it is told in the Gospel according to St. John. We cannot fully appreciate how the writings of the New Testament relate to one another until we have understood the distinctive voice of each one of them. Thus, the goal of this particular study will also be simply to let John be John. Fifthly, there is no such thing as a plain reading of the Gospel of John. Try to understand this. Though I have already touched above, I want to be clear that the objectivity is ultimately a myth. When we come to the text, we bring ourselves, all of us, to the text. When we study the Bible, we pursue an ideal that is practically unachievable. We want to know what the text is saying, what it means. If we are going to read the Gospel of John honestly, we must recognize that each one of us brings a great deal to the text. What we bring to the text is often as determinative in finding meaning as we actually find in the text. More often than not, what we bring to the text is the most decisive factor in determining the meaning, whether we realize it or not. As I stated above, we must all recognize the influence of our own lenses while seeking to transcend them. Now that we have laid out the assumptions that will guide our approach, we can proceed to an examination of the gospel itself. Since this particular study is intended to be a critical introduction for the students and lay leaders, its primary aim is to provide a strategy for interpreting the gospel in an informed way. The next seven sessions or maybe more will try to move systematically through the issues that must be considered when in attempting to read the Gospel of John. The second session sets the stage for everything else that follows. There we discuss the importance of the John's prologue chapter 1 verses 1 to 18 and how to read the entire Gospel in the light of this particular introduction. In the third session we look at the two level drama that unfolds the narrative. A conversation that draws upon starting point one above. The session four will then consider the interesting and potentially troublesome issues of the gospel's connection to the interaction of the first century Judaism. In the fifth session, we shall examine the distinctive language used throughout the narrative and what this language communicates about the gospel's Christology. The sixth session takes an in-depth look at how John constructs characters and how those figures contribute to the overall rhetoric of the narrative. Since the ultimate goal of this particular study as indicated by its own title, Reading John, is to help others read the gospel effectively. There is a seventh session in which we will pull together the insights from the previous chapters and demonstrate how to read a selected passage from the narrative. The final session of this particular study reflects briefly on contemporary theological concerns raised by an informed reading of this important ancient text.